everybody and welcome to The Flute Practice. Today we are going to be looking at how you can find a really nice standing position or posture as we often call it. I kind of like to think of this more as kind of finding a really balanced, free kind of space to stand in rather than thinking about a rigid position. But there are some basic principles and rules that we need to follow. So today we're going to check this out. So one of the real kind of fundamental points about how we stand when we play the flute is the fact that we are playing an instrument that is out to the side and we are holding it out to the side. We are not like the flute, I'm obviously already like the clarinet and the recorder, we are not playing an instrument that we're kind of holding down here where we can be a little bit more frontal but rather we have this weird awkward kind of side instrument business. And as a result we don't want to kind of stand in a straight line like this because we get this kind of a thing where we are sort of squashed in back like this and trying to hold the instrument and so on and so forth, which really is just not very helpful or very useful. So what we really want to do is we want to get these shoulders at a bit of an angle to the flute. So we want to kind of create this angle and create this space here in order to accommodate the side position. And this is going to start all the way down at our feet. And I know I've recently explained this in a video. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. So what we really want to start off with is we want to realize that we don't want to play the flute standing completely rigid and frontal, but rather that we want to take that step back. The reason being that we are playing an instrument that we play out to the side. Say hi to Roxy, everybody. She'd probably wander in and out. She usually feels a little bit hopeless at this time of the day. Another way that you can kind of think about this, so there's my music stand here right in front. You guys are my music stand. And I'll stand sort of to the side of my music stand. And I'll then think about kind of taking a step out and kind of forward and then swiveling my foot a little bit in. I sometimes say to people, it's a little bit more kind of like the martial art stance is also kind of in this um, position or a surface stance is in a similar position. But of course, we're not quite so far apart with our legs as we are with maybe some of the martial arts and the surfing. And also the knees aren't going to bend quite so much. So a little bit more, I, you know, I, we talk about kind of hip width or shoulder width apart, your feet. So if you can kind of gauge where your shoulders are and your hips are, and then you can kind of think or feel your feet going underneath that nicely. So the next really important part of our body is our knees or are our knees and our hips. I kind of feel like I'm doing that like head, shoulders, knees and toes business. Now, very often, and I'm going to turn to the side so you can see this a little bit better, but very, very often what I see players doing is kind of locking the knees backwards. Now, I love to kind of think about the seams of my clothing. Uh, you can't see maybe so clearly here, but I'll draw a line nicely down there. When I lock my knees back like that, you can actually see where this line is going. It's no longer going straight down, but rather at an angle. And remember, anything that is going at some kind of an angle, anything that is not really going really down to the ground, we are kind of fighting against gravity in some form or another, and muscles are going to have to work to compensate for this. So you can really experiment with this. Lock your knees right back, so we're really locking them right back like that, and then you can bend them, and you'll feel there's kind of tension in the legs when you do both. And then what you really want to do is you want to find something in between. So I like to kind of just give my knees a bit of movement, kind of wiggle them a little bit, and just feel how they can be soft, but not like locked and not bent. So a lot of people, when I say like, unlock your knees, they kind of do this. That's also kind of a form of locking your knees in a sense. So you want to just make sure that they're nice and soft and loose and free. And you'll feel all these muscles and especially in your lower back, you'll feel this area really freeing up a huge amount. So we're going to take that, get into our position. So we have our feet at that nice angle again and here we're just going to loosen and free up our knees nicely. And now with this comes the freedom in the hips. Now you, same thing, we can kind of lock our hips and our knees together. We can free up our knees, but still kind of lock our hip in some kind of a way. I, you know, I don't really even know, you know how I used to do this thing where I used to lock my knees back and kind of jut forward with my hip like this. This is very extreme, but it's kind of the idea. So when we release our knees, we want to also just get a feeling of releasing our hips and often you kind of think about this tilting forward tilting this bone here I feel it's kind of kind of tilting forward a little bit um, it really helps at this point to kind of go look at like some skeletons and look at this, these bones and look how they look and and kind of how they connect and all of that just to get an idea of what it really kind of looks like in your body it's amazing actually another really helpful thing to think about in your knees is kind of getting a sense that 
your knees are not kind of bone on bone. In fact, say hi to Roxy again. It's not these two bones that are like grinding together and, and kind of creating the joint, but rather that, and it's not even cartilage on cartilage, which is quite incredible, but rather that we've got this sort of small space of what we call synovial fluid. We've got like a kind of fluid between those two joints and that there's kind of like a little bit of space between these joints. And when you're standing and you're feeling those free knees and you know, in, in all your joints, but especially I find in those knees, think about that space between those joints and feel that space in those knees. It kind of gives you a sense of lightness in those knees, which is really, really what we want and what we need for play. So once we've kind of got our hips and our knees sorted, the next area we want to look at is really the kind of torso area. Now this is so guided by what happens down here in our feet and our hips. So if we have any tension in our feet, hips and knees, we are really going to struggle to find any kind of balance up here. So we really want to kind of get a sense of this line that goes right through our body. So the line that really starts up here behind the ears where your spine starts through your neck, your shoulders, your shoulder points, which are not kind of pulling in and also not like overly pulling out. So we don't want to kind of do this chest out, stand up straight, arch the back kind of a thing, but rather we want to feel those free knees, those free hips, and then just feel those shoulders gliding beautifully on the top of your, of your rib cage, of your torso, your back in the neutral position. So once again, this is kind of like a whole video topic on its own, but not arching like that. And of course not slouching like that, but really just feeling it release. Once again, you can kind of explore and experiment with this and then feeling the neck and head just gliding over that. I'm going to show you again. So if we lock those knees back, jut those hips out, you're going to see really clearly and you can follow the seams of my clothing that I'm just no longer getting that lovely straight line. Now I'm going to release my knees, feel them over the arches of my feet, release my hips, feel them over my knees and my feet, and then feel my, this beautiful spine, which actually goes straight through the middle of your body, the kind of weight bearing part of it anyway, straight through here, into my shoulder and through my neck. I'm gonna feel that kind of like really nice supporting spine in the middle of my body that, you know, a lot of people kind of even refer to this as like a tree trunk or like it's just this incredible, incredible, incredible thing that we have that just helps support us. And I'm going to feel that really being free and easy and I can kind of rotate the whole body around it like that. So what we can really think about kind of in our standing position. So once again, you are my music stand. I'm going to take that step back with my right leg. I almost imagine that my body is completely facing in this direction. So I'm fully facing in this direction and then just your head is going to turn over. So your body is still staying facing in this direction. Your head gently rotates around the neck, turns over and you bring the flute up. I had a student who quite rightly uh, pointed out that you, it'll feel like your flute is almost facing in the same direction as your body is, is pointing. So the end of your flute is kind of pointing in the same direction as your body. Your head comes over and then you lift up the flute to you. Now it's really, really important that we don't do this kind of thing where we go to the flute, down to the flute, but that we really get a sense of this beautiful long neck. A really wonderful way to kind of experience this nice long neck is just to get your hand, the back of your head here, like this, and just feeling kind of the nice weight of the head there, just feeling sort of how kind of big and heavy your head actually is, hopefully. And then you can kind of glide your hand down and just feel the imprint of the hand there still and just feel this beautiful long neck. And then we glide the flute up to meet us and don't go down to the flute. Guys, I have done a whole video where we really talk about just the neck and the head and this relationship. So I'm going to really link you to that video, encourage you to go watch that. It's, you know, it's a whole area that we can spend and need to spend a lot of time on because it is so important. Okay, so the final perspective I'm going to give you guys for this is the kind of bird's eye view. I'm going to let you see what it looks like from the top. I think this can be so enlightening. So you're going to see those feet in that position that's not facing straight to the music stand. So here's my music stand, you guys once again. And I'm here, got that position. And then I am turning my head over gently. Um, you know, if, if you could kind of... This is pretty gruesome, but if you could like drive a wedge right through my body from the top of the crown of my head, right at the top here, right down, you would draw this beautiful, hopefully straight line, sort of anchoring down towards the earth. And 
From there then, I'm going to gently just bring the flute up to me and you will see this angle that is formed when I'm playing. And this is really the basic, I say position, but really in this, you can move and you can find freedom. And a really wonderful way to kind of practice this is not kind of get stuck in the position because that usually kind of really starts weird stuff, but just really feeling freedom and moving and kind of swinging from one foot to the other, more in a vertical, I mean, more in a horizontal pattern than kind of vertically, but just feeling, shifting the weight from foot to foot. Just feeling a sense of ease in that. Okay, guys, there is so much that can and should be said about this topic. It is really just so important. I'm going to say it again and again. Our bodies are part of the instrument that we play in. The way that we use our bodies is really going to determine what comes out of that instrument. So we really do want to focus on this and pay attention to what we're doing with our bodies. I'm going to encourage you to explore and I'm going to encourage you to build awareness. In the beginning, you often don't feel things. You know, I say to students like, how do you feel when you release your knees? And they say, oh, they feel the same. So in the beginning, we tend to kind of not feel as much. And the more we go on this journey, the more we experience and we feel and we start to really realize what we are doing to our bodies. I also want to really encourage you to practice this all the time. You know, you're waiting in a queue somewhere, you're standing in the showers or whatever it might be. You know, think about how you are standing, how you're treating your body all the time. This is so amazingly important and actually quite life-changing. And I could do an entire video looking at how breathing is affected by the way we stand. And you want to do yourself a favor, try the difference between breathing with your knees locked back and between loosening them and so on and so forth. Once again, with those who have got kind of a bit more body awareness, you will really feel more and more and more. For those of you who, you know, maybe this is quite new, don't worry if like you're like, I'm not feeling any difference. I want you just to keep exploring and experimenting and see where this journey takes you. Until then, everybody, happy practicing and see you next time.